Vegetables are felt to be one of the healthiest foods that anybody can eat. They have a health halo that is represented in multiple levels of scientific evidence. But now a study shows that eating more vegetables has no correlation with, re with reducing cardiovascular risk. Interesting. Could it be that our health halo for vegetables has been misplaced all along? Let's get into the details. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and this study is Raw and Cooked Vegetable Consumption and Risk of Cardiovascular Disease, a study of 400,000 adults in UK Biobank. And this was published in Frontiers in Nutrition. So right away, just by saying the UK Biobank trial or UK Biobank cohort, you know it's just one of these nutritional epidemiology studies where they're mining the data from a huge section of the population, um, but there was no intervention, there's no control, and there's likely to be a ton of confounding variables. And that's one of the big problems in this study. But 400,000 people without prior cardiovascular disease were included, and they looked at both raw and cooked vegetable intake and looked at it among different quartiles. They broke the quartiles down into less than one tablespoon per day, in which there were about 16,000 people, two to three tablespoons per day, which were um, 109,000 people, four to seven tablespoons per day, which was the most common group, 216,000, and greater than eight tablespoons per day, which was 57,000 people. But basically what they found was when it came to cooked vegetable intake, there was no association with cardiovascular risk, either worsening or Im improving, which goes a little bit against um, the common narrative that vegetables are so healthy and prevent cardiovascular disease and everybody should be eating their vegetables, right? So in this trial, there was sort of, there was no association between cooked vegetable intake. Now it doesn't specify what type of vegetables, right? Leafy greens or, or cruciferous vegetables or, um, or peppers or, you know, what, what were people eating? And that's not specified at all. But on the raw vegetables, there was a very small association. But here's what's interesting. There were so many confounders. When you factor in all those confounders, basically the association starts to disappear. So the author's conclusion was really interesting. Higher intakes of raw but not cooked vegetables were associated with lower cardiovascular risk. Residual confounding is likely to account for much, if not all, of the observed associations. This study suggests the need to reappraise the evidence on the burden of cardiovascular disease attributable to low vegetable intake in the high income population. So that middle sentence I think is the most important. Residual confounding is likely to account for much if not all of the observed, of so, observed associations. And that's true for pretty much so many nutritional epidemiology studies. So it was interesting that they decided to really um, highlight that and, and put it in the, in the conclusion, even in the abstract, that it was important enough to make that point when really that's sort of summarizing nutritional epidemiology in my mind, that residual confounding accounts for much, if not all of the observed associations, especially when the hazard ratios are so small. Um, and, and that's a problem that we just have to get over in all nutritional epidemiology studies. But here's the other point. The other point is what is it, is it that a certain food has a halo to it, like a vegetable has a halo to it? Or is it that vegetables tend to re replace unhealthy foods? That if you're eating more vegetables, you're probably eating fewer processed foods. You're probably eating fewer high glycemic, high carb, high carb mixed with fat foods um, that are hyper palatable, right? If you're, if you're eating more vegetables, it's probably replacing more of those foods. So I think it's also a lesson that maybe we're a little too aggressive at, at giving foods a health halo. And a great example of this is quote unquote healthy whole grains. The majority or the, the overwhelming majority of the studies showing benefit of whole grains are when they replace refined grains. And that's no surprise, right? That's no surprise at all. But what if whole grains were replacing vegetables? Would there still be a benefit? I don't think so. What if whole grains were, repla were replacing meat in a, in a low carb diet? a low processed whole foods, low carb diet, would they still be beneficial? I don't think so. And then the other side of that is the negative, I guess the negative halo or what it would be like devil, devil ears instead of a halo, um, put around food groups like meat. Because again, what is it replacing? If meat is replacing um, vegetables or if meat is in addition to high carb foods and it's one of those high carb, high fat, high meat diets, okay, that's problematic. But what about meat? 
associated with a high vegetable diet in a low carb diet that's mostly whole foods. Does that have the same connotation? And I would argue absolutely not, it doesn't. So again, just like we're a little too aggressive in, at assigning food halos, I think we're a little too aggressive at assigning food devil ears or devil horns, or I forget what, the, what I already said the equivalent was. But the point being is that demonizing or praising foods is, is so much dependent on the context of the diet and so much dependent on the context of what it replaces. And I think that's what this, this study um, helps highlight for me that I think is important for you to learn from it. So one, the issue of the confounding variables and the um, weakness of nutritional epidemiology, this shows that front and center, but also the importance of what are you replacing and what is the underlying diet also so, so important. So what's the conclusion? Are vegetables no longer healthy? Of course not. Vegetables can certainly be part of a healthy diet and have been part of healthy diets in numerous epidemiology studies. Um, randomized control trials have also shown some benefit to vegetables, but it's actually surprising how that the randomized control trial is not near to the degree of the observational studies. But vegetables are certainly part of a healthy diet. And if you're combining vegetables with minimally processed animal products, in my mind, that's one of the healthiest diets you can eat um, and something that you enjoy. And that's the other point, you know, enjoyment is such a key aspect. If you enjoy vegetables, by all means, you should be eating them. If you hate vegetables and you don't enjoy them at all, you might not need to eat them, at least not many of them, or at all. If you enjoy meat, then you should absolutely be eating meat and eat your meat as part of a minimally processed whole foods diet um, that is something that is consistent with your enjoyment pattern, your culture, your beliefs, and helps your overall health. And what's that that isn't is the high processed, high carb, high fat, high caloric diet. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm saying enjoy meat and eat it if you enjoy it. I'm talking about fitting it in to a healthy dietary context. Context matters. And that's what this study really highlights for me. All right, that's enough for my rant for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Take care, everybody.